In this video, I'd like to discuss the second law of thermodynamics, sometimes also known as the entropy imbalance. And we're going to do this in the same way that we've looked at momentum balance and energy balance. We'll look at a global form of the second law, and then we'll also look at a local form. So again, the global form is the type of thing that you measure in the laboratory, and the local form is something that we're going to need for doing detailed calculations of what happens inside a continuum body. So the setup will be the same as always. We'll have a deforming body, B. So the deformed configuration is BT. And we'll look at a particular collection of material particles in a part of that body, P. So at time T, they'll occupy the region PT. Um, the total entropy of the part will denote by S. And that's going to be an interval of the entropy density. So we'll use the symbol eta M for the entropy density per unit mass. And so if I multiply that by the actual density, mass density, then I'll get entropy per unit volume. Multiply it by little volumes and add up by integration, I'll get then the total entropy of this section of the body. So that's the total entropy. Uh, now, to change the entropy of the body, I'm going to define uh, the entropy flow. So I can have volumetric entropy supply in the body, and I'll use the symbol little j. So that's entropy per unit volume per unit time. Uh, so being added volumetrically to the body. And I can also have a flux of entropy, uh, and I'll use the symbol j for the entropy flux. So if I have a, a unit normal n, I can have a flux of entropy just like I have a heat flux. So that will be J. And that's the vector J there. And so J dotted would N gives me the entropy that is leaving the body or the part of the body that I'm interested in here. So that's why there's a minus sign here. So the second law itself says that the time rate of change of the total entropy is always greater or equal to the entropy flow. So this is the global entropy imbalance. So the entropy can never change at a rate that is less than the flow of entropy uh, into the body. So it's always uh, increasing faster than what you're putting into it. So this is the global form of the second law of thermodynamics. And I'd like to look also at the, at the local form. And so let me go ahead and rewrite the global statement here using the integral expressions. So the integral of rho a to m, well, time rate of change is greater or equal to the integral of j, so the volumetric supply, minus the entropy flux coming out of the part of the body that we're examining. So I can bring everything under the integral sign pt by applying the divergence theorem to this term here and moving everything to the left-hand side. So I have rho a to m, so I've taken this time derivative here and I've moved it inside the integral sign here using the usual construction with the density, mapping back to an integral over p, taking the time derivative underneath and then moving it back forward into an integral over pt. And we have minus the entropy supply, volumetric, and we'll have a plus the divergence of the entropy flux. So you have to keep track of the j's, whether they're scalars or vectors. So I can now apply the localization theorem to this relationship, and that will tell me that rho a to m dot is greater or equal to little j minus the divergence of the vector j. So this is the local entropy imbalance relationship. Now, this is not the way that we will finally write it, but we'll make use of one fundamental hypothesis in, in continuum mechanics, which is that the volumetric entropy supply is actually equal to the volumetric heating divided by the absolute temperature here. So the theta there is the absolute temperature. And that the entropy flux, so the vector j, is equal to the heat flux vector also divided by the absolute temperature. So if I, I'll plug those back into my, my expression here for the local entropy imbalance. And that then gives me this statement here. It says rho a to m dot is greater or equal to r over theta minus the divergence of q divided by theta. 
And if you want to write that in, out additionally, uh, this divergence expression here, just to be clear, is qi divided by theta, the whole quantity here, comma theta. So maybe written out a little bit more explicitly, xi qi over theta. And this is really, this is the local expression of the second law. So this is the one that we're going to need going forward.